welcome back and today we're talking about an introduction to a class called statics okay statics is a class based on Newton's laws okay Newton had three laws they're not just a good idea it's the law okay so Newton went down to the courthouse and he's the first day and he says listen I've got a new law y'all all need to listen hear ye hear ye an object at rest will remain at rest in other words, if you don't touch that statue over there tomorrow when we come back, it'll still be there. And the people were like, okay, Newton, whatever. Or an object in motion will remain in motion. Now, there's something special about this motion here. It has to be constant velocity. There's no acceleration. So if we want to sum this first law up mathematically, we would say that the sum of the forces, I put a little vector symbol over top of that, is equal to zero, okay? The second law is a force on a body is equal to its mass times acceleration. So that's the second law is the sum of the forces is equal to ma. Okay, that's an a. Not a very good one, but it's an a. Okay, and so really this and this are the same thing because up here acceleration is zero. So if I put a zero in there, of course it makes that whole side zero, right? So same equation except there is no acceleration in the first law. And then the last one, for every action, there is an equal, equal, but opposite reaction. Now, let's see if we can maybe apply some of these laws to some real life situations. Okay, first situation. I've got my statics book and I've got a good thing to use it for. Um, fixing my hammer. My hammer's no good. Look, my hammer's broken. The head and the handle are not together. So this is no good for hammering. Now, how does this and this stay together anyway? Well, because this is metal, this is wood, you can't weld this to this. How does it stay on there? Well, nothing more than a little bit of friction, right? That's the only thing that holds it on there. So if I just put that on there super lightly, right? If I just kind of set it on there very super lightly, do you think I can use Newton's laws to fix my hammer? Okay, here you go. Here's my book, and I'm going to use this kind of as a table. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slam this on it a little bit. Okay, so this was going down, and then I stopped it, right? So how does that Newton's first law? Well, an object in motion, right? It, this is in motion until it hit that book, right? And then it stopped. The handle stopped. But what did the head do? The head, it wanted to keep moving, didn't it? So as the handle stopped, the head kept moving. And guess what? Oh, I can't get it off there now, okay? I have fixed my hammer. I could go do some hammering now, okay? All right, so let's talk about maybe a different way I can fix my hammer, okay? So now I've got my hammer. Now I'm gonna put this the other way around, okay? And I'm just gonna make this where it just barely stays on there, right? Just barely stay, okay? Now this time I'm gonna smack it on the top. What do you think is gonna happen? The head's gonna fly down and hit me in the foot, right? Well, let's try it out, ready? Here we go. Oh! Okay, what happened? Let's see what happened here. You want to try and pull it? <laughs> okay, I, I can't get it off there. This is on there. I'm talking about this. It's on there. Okay, so what happened that time? Okay, this guy has a lot of inertia. What is inertia? Think of inertia as just another word for it is mass, right? This is a lot of mass, okay? I have a lot of inertia. The earth is very attracted to me, okay? So as it's sitting there, it's at rest. When I struck the handle, right, the, the handle accelerated. But what did the head do? Head's like, man, I'm going to stay at rest, right? And so the handle is actually driven into the head of the hammer, and it is on there. I really I can't get it apart. I'll have to hit it upside down to get it off there, right? Okay, so there, I repaired my hammer with Newton's first law. Let's try the second one. Okay, next, how about a demonstration of the next one? F equals M times A, okay? I got two toes, I got two blocks, equal size, right? I'm gonna drop this one on one toe, this one on the other toe, right? This one's made out of foam. This one's made out of PB, which is Spanish for lead, okay? I'm gonna drop these on my toe, ready? One, and, and well, let's see what, how they fall. Ready? One, two, three. Oh! Ah, 
that really did me. So, okay. <laughs> did you see what happened? They fell at the exact same rate because acceleration is the same. Now, if I had my toe under there, I really didn't, but one of them did hit me in the foot. The lead one, man, that hurt. If I really did, right, have my foot under there, what kind of force would I have felt? Well, the force from the lead, because there's much more mass, would have been much greater. So M times A. Acceleration was the same. Both of them dropped it, negative 9.81 meters per second squared. But the force implied on my foot, or imparted on my foot, totally different, because one of them has much more mass, right? OK, the last one. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Let's see if we understand that one. OK. So I've got a rope, okay? I'm gonna throw you one end of the rope, you catch it, okay, ready? Did you get it? You dropped it, okay. So we've got a rope here, okay? And in the middle of that rope, there is a scale. Imagine there's a scale in the middle of it. I'll draw you a picture, okay? So there's a little guy over here, okay? And there's a little guy over here, that's you, okay? Look how skinny you are. And there's a rope here and a rope here in the middle there's a scale, okay? It would read the force there, okay? So you're gonna pull this way, 20 pounds, and I'm gonna pull this way, 20 pounds, okay? And the question is, what will the scale read, okay? All right, ready? You answer. Write it down on your paper. You tell me what the answer is, okay? You got an answer? Thinking, thinking. Okay, I got one. Okay, here you go. I bet you on your paper you have one of three answers. I hope. You have either 0, 20, or 40. Okay? There's pounds is my symbol for, hashtag is symbol for pounds there. Okay? So what did you write down? Zero. So most students, I'll tell you this right now, most students would write down 0. Well, that guy pulls that way 20, and that guy pulls that way 20, so they cancel out, so 0. Well, what if that was your arms in there, right? Somebody's pulling 20 pounds on each one of your arms. Are you telling me you'd feel zero? You'd feel nothing? No, that's silly, okay? So is it 20 or 40? I don't know. I'm so confused now. Okay, how about this? You have totally done a bad job, so I'm going to take your end of the rope, and I'm going to tie it to that doorknob back there behind you, okay? So now I've got the rope tied to a doorknob, got the scale in the middle, and I'm going to pull on the rope. Ready? I put 20 pounds on the rope. What does the scale read? Look how fast you said, hey, it's 20 pounds. What's the difference between you and the door? Well, the door's not pulling. Yeah, the door is pulling. If the door doesn't pull 20 pounds, guess what happens? The door opens up, right? So that it's, it's an equal and opposite reaction. If I pull on the door, the door has to pull back to stay in place, okay? So the answer is 20 pounds. It reads 20 pounds. It doesn't read 40. They don't add together. And I had one of a student, a, a, an older gentleman, he texted me on my website. And he said, there is no way that that's right. So he set up this whole elaborate experience, experiment with scales and ropes and things. And he tied and felt and weighed stuff on there. And sure enough, they sent me a note back and said, you were right. I couldn't believe it. It, I, it didn't make sense, but now it does. So, so it's 20 pounds. As a matter of fact, when this guy pulls 20 pounds, this guy has no other option than to pull 20 pounds. Because what happens if this guy only pulls 10 pounds? Whoop, you're coming to me. It's like tug of war, right? If you don't pull the same amount. Now, there is a zero here. What is the zero? The zero is the whole entire system, right? This guy's force plus that guy's force, right? They're equal. Those cancel out. So the whole entire system is zero. But the scale would read 20 pounds. Now, let's see. We missed that. So let's try it again. This time, let's try it with a pair of pliers. Okay, these are some real, oh, those are terrible pliers. Okay, really terrible. I don't know why this side is so fat. That's not right. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, let's try these pliers out here and let's put a pecan. Maybe we got a pecan right there. And we put some force P, okay, on the handles, right? And these pliers are like force multipliers. If you put 10 pounds over there, you get 100 pounds over there. Ooh, I wonder if that's why they're called pliers, because they're force multiplier. Okay, never mind. Okay, so you've got over here, 100 pounds, 100 pounds. Okay? 
My question to you now is, what does the pecan feel? Okay? And if you don't know about pecans, pretend it's your thumb. You put your thumb in there and you got 100 pounds and 100 pounds. What does your thumb feel? Okay, write that one down. Let's see what you get. Yeah, you didn't write it down as fast as you did the first time, did you? Now you're like, I'm not so sure anymore. Okay? Let's see if what you wrote down. You could have written down this. You could have written down zero, 100, or 200. I guess you could have written down 400, but then you'd be mentally insane and we'd have to lock you up somewhere. Okay, so which one is it? Now, hopefully we learned something from the first example and we steered clear of zero. If I put my thumb in the pliers, I'm definitely not going to feel nothing, so that one's out. So I don't know if it's 100 or 200. It's one of those two. Okay, well, let me ask you this. If I just put the pecan on a table and I put 100 pounds on it, uh, what force is on the pecan? Boom, instantly you say 100 pounds, right? But what's the table doing? If I push down on the table, the table has to push up, right? This force causes that force. Action, reaction, what? That's right, the answer is 100 pounds. So if you had that circled, you got it right, okay? So that's Newton's three laws and kind of some examples of of uh, you know a practical uh, use of Newton's three laws. Now let's call, talk about a couple more things before we finish. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is the difference between a scalar and a vector. Okay, so scalars and vectors. So what is a scalar? Scalar is a quantity described by magnitude alone. That's it. So if just have just magnitude, that's it. That's a scalar. Something like mass. Okay? It's not mass to the left. It's not mass up. It's just mass just is, right? Time just is. Temperature just is. Um, I don't know what I can think of for another one, right? Um, maybe, maybe length. No, yeah. Yeah, maybe a length, right? Okay. Next you have uh, a vector. What is a vector? And sadly, most students remember this from the what was the one, the Despicable Me movie, right? Because the little guy's name was Vector because he had magnitude and direction. Okay, so same as the other one, a quantity described by both magnitude and direction. Okay. And some examples of a vector quantity might be something like acceleration. And we'll put a little vector sign on top of them. Velocity. Um, force is a good one, right? You might use um, displacement, right? We'll call that displacement. I'm moving so far, in a, uh, so far in a certain direction, okay? So those would be some vector quantities. So scalar quantities, vector quantities. These are some things that we're going to talk about in statics when you know what they are. And then lastly, I want to talk to you about vectors graphically, okay? Okay, sometimes we can draw vectors graphically, like if we're out in the field and all we had was a ruler and a protractor, we could add vectors together if we draw them right, okay? So graphical, graphically, um, let's just say graphical vectors, okay? Vectors. Okay, here is how you draw a vector, okay? So what you have here is the body of the vector represents the magnitude, the how big it is, okay? And the tip or the arrow here represents the sense of the vector. Now sense, you might see sense, you're like, what? That doesn't make any sense, okay? It's just another word for direction. Okay, 
the direction of the vector. Okay, so if I sketch a vector at the right angle and, the, and, a, and a length that represented, say like I had a 100 pounds and for every inch it represented 10 pounds. So I would draw a 10 inch vector, right? I could do that. Then the only other thing you need to know about this is this, and this is very important here, is vectors lie on a line. And that line is called the line of action. You'll see me write it as the LOA. That's not a leave of absence, but the line of action. And it goes on forever and ever, right? So it, for instance, if you had your car and you ran out of gas, does your car work care if you push on it or does your car care if you pull on it? Well, as long as I'm pulling in the same direction, right? The car doesn't care, okay? So a force can move up and down a line of action without changing uh, the effect to the body that it's pushing on. So that's a very important thing we need to remember. Okay, when we come back, we're going to talk about some vectors some more, and we're going to start talking about vector addition.